welcome to another Blackstone Fortress project update video. Today we're going to be doing Amelin Shadow Guide. She's an Eldar Ranger and she's pretty cool and actually she was in fact a lot of fun to paint. I was, I was a little surprised by how much fun. So without uh, getting too much into it, let's, uh, let's get started. So I start off with a Zenithal highlight. Normally I just do this for, you know, a map of, of how this is going to work, but also in this case I wanted a good solid base coat for a lot of those white parts. Now I did go over it a few more times, but it did give me something to keep in mind. The very first thing I did was straight out of the airbrush, no mixing or diluting, I did some Waywatchers green on the inside of the cloak. and. I did ultimately decide to make this a little bit more greener rather than just kind of a, a bright green yellow because I, I just felt like it was a little washed out and I just wasn't feeling it, but you'll see that later in the video. I've said it before and I'll say it again, working with white is a really big pain in the butt. It's difficult to, it's not so hard to paint white on first. It's just hard to go over other colors. The first thing I did is I went in with a muddy, dull green from Vallejo Air. I forget the specific color, but I just did a couple of coats of that on the cloak, or at least on the exterior of the cloak, just to start laying in some base colors. I will say, one thing I was pretty impressed about with this model was that even though it looks fairly complicated, it wasn't difficult to paint around things like the hose, uh, the little hair scarf stocking thing. It's pretty easy to get in and out and around in this model, so I was very pleased with the design of it. One of the things that I was really trying to make sure was that I didn't clog the detail around those spirit stones in the cloak itself. After painting in that dark green, I slowly started adding brighter and brighter greens to it. This served to not just cover up some of the splotchiness of the Zenithal highlight, but also give it a much more smoother, more vibrant, more volumetric appearance. It's really being able to show off some of those forms a little bit better. After that, I went in and used a little bit of dark metallic just to do the piping on her gun. This was really the only place that I needed this color, but I found that it looked, it would look strange if I used any other color. After that, I went in with the Vallejo Liquid Metal Gold, did all the details. I'm a little loose here because I know I'm going to be painting over this white again and again and again, so I'm not too worried about being too terribly neat. After that was all dry, I went in and just started adding a really bright yellow green onto all the, the highlights of the cloak just to help define the volumes a little bit better than they were. I was going in very thin, making sure that it was pulling in all the right places and soaking it up where it wasn't, you know, the right place for it. I then went in and started basing the black elements with a dark charcoal, including the grenades, the scabbard, and the gun. After that was done, I went in with some Colia Green Shade to add some death finishing into the white armor. This is a very tricky step because it, it stains all the white and you have to go in and, and redo all those sections and it's very painful. I also added this to uh, bits of the cloak just to reinforce some of those shadows just to provide some depth with that green blue 
After that, I based the leather parts and bits with two thin coats of a concrete color from Vallejo Model Air. I find that I'm really liking working with brown a lot. It's a very interesting color in that it goes on very smoothly, yet it can be very bright at times, unlike white, which is just painful to work with. After that was all dry, I went in with some Agrax Earthshade and just did an overall wash on all the leather parts just to add some more definition and a little bit of darkness in those recesses, and it just helped define the volumes and shapes a bit better. After that, I went in with progressively lighter shades of the same brown mixed with a little bit of a light tan just to help accentuate some of those raised areas from those recesses. Again, I did that in multiple passes, going a little bit lighter every time just to help them pop a little bit more. went in and started stippling on some of those lighter tones just to provide a little bit of texture and just some information that says that this is not a perfectly smooth leather. It did start to get a little bit washed out but I knew I was going to come in with some Agrax Earthshade a little bit later just to kind of harmonize all those tones really using it almost more of as a glaze at this point as well as a wash. I do like the brown and I like the green and everything, but honestly, at a certain point here, she started to come across as really kind of cartoony, and that was something I wanted to avoid a little bit. So after going in and adding some Agrax Earthshade into the gold to kind of keep it toned down from like a Reichland Flesh shade, for instance, I went in and sprayed some Colia Green shade all over the model, including the leather, although I did go back and bring that back into the brown range a little bit just to darken it and add a little bit of color depth. The blade, I went in with some Caribou Crimson and Druki Violet mixed in an airbrush and just sprayed on a simple gradient and then later highlighted it with white. Notably, that blade is the fourth or fifth iteration of that attempt. I redid that about five times and I literally scraped it back down to plastic and reprimed it each time. Finally, I settled on this and I liked it a lot better. So here it is all done. As you can see on that right leg, I went in and re-brightened up and added some more specific warm brown colors to that leg, as well as just tightening up the model in general, a few little finishing touches here and there. I like her, she turned out well. Uh, you know, obviously she's based just like my other Blackstone Fortress models. I don't put on the gloss clear coat at this stage when I'm recording a turnaround for it because it just it's very glossy and it's hard to, to film that properly. But yeah, she turned out awesome. I, I was very pleased with this model overall, despite how much pain and suffering that blade gave me. It was well the, as the white. I really liked it a lot. And I hope you did too. If you did like this video, please, by all means, leave a like. If you have any questions or comments or anything, you can leave them down below. I, I love seeing those. I love responding to them. I respond to every single one of them. <laughs> if you're new here and you really like this video and you want to see more of it, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the bell to receive all updates, all videos. I do put out videos about once every week, maybe eight or nine days tops. Depends on how it goes. Painting is not the hard part. Editing the videos and doing the voiceover is, does, is really what takes the most time. I want you to know that I appreciate your viewership. It means the world to me. Your, your attention is 
greatly appreciated, and I'm, I'm glad that you're enjoying what you're seeing. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Synthetic Black. We'll catch you next time.